If ever a family defined itself by athletics, it's the Moronics in Grass Valley, California. For parents Dave and Courtney and sons Torin and Trey, sports are not a way of life, they are life. We're a big sports family. My grandfather played professional football, my uncle played professional football. We've raised them around sports. They've been fortunate to, to be around a lot of professional athletes. We're always doing something. We started with baseball, and then it was strictly basketball, lacrosse, and football. And hockey. And ice hockey. The boys, they do like the Tough Mudders and the Spartans with me. I love competing. All of my hard work is gonna beat yours. I always looked up to him and I always like strived to get better because like he was always like the best athlete. His like speed and everything like that, it was in, like crazy. He doesn't like contact, he likes going around people. My dad named me Torn David Moronic. David is my middle name because TD is the initials for touchdown. He's dedicated, he's focused in all parts of uh, what he does athletically and what he does around campus in terms of helping other students. He does it with enthusiasm and passion. Torin's always been the kid who's a perfectionist. He's always been an unbelievable student and an extraordinary athlete. There's a picture of me side by side when I was five years old and when I was 15 years old. And it's of me running the ball, same exact form, arm placement, my feet were in the same way, I had the arm held up for a stiff arm if anyone came by, my eyes were up looking down the field. That picture really just showed me that how long and how significant sports have been in my life. Then the unexpected and incomprehensible, the thing that defined Torin was gone. I'm gonna hand you this piece of paper. Right. You grab it yeah. and open it up and read to me out loud what it says. Okay. June 24th, 2016. June 24th, 2016. Yeah, um, that's a date that I'm never gonna forget. That day changed my life and my family's life, and especially Torrance. Like, none of us thought like any of that stuff was gonna happen to him. You don't like getting I don't like getting those calls where a student that is uh, under your care, under your watch. Um, <sighs> well, it's hurt, hurt for that family, hurt that, uh, you know, that they have to endure something that no family should have to endure. The summer before Torrin's senior year included MVP honors in the California State Lacrosse Championship. Next, summer football ahead of what was sure to be an all-league season. The Bear River Bruins set out for a non-contact camp on California's central coast. You know, no helmets, no shoulder pads, no nothing. It was just 7v7 straight out, Morro Bay. 40 plus teams, you know, we've done it before, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. And then we were uh, sitting on the sidelines and he went out for a corner route in the end zone and uh, torn like he is, he, he wanted to make the catch. I remember the name of the play, I remember the play call. I remember the play before it that got us in that position to score a touchdown. We see him dive for a ball that was like close out of bounds and he was just trying to score and get his, keep his feet in and stuff. And the fields are really close together and there's like people in between them, like field, field, and then in between there's people. And I had no idea that there were two men that were standing foot from the sideline. And when he dove, 
he flew into them. Me and my dad both just went, oh, like, those, it sucks for those people. Like, they just got nailed by a kid coming flying in, and then he hit the ground, and my mom's like, he's not moving. It knocked him out, and then he flew right into the ground head first. And that is what led to my traumatic brain injury. The thing I remember the most about that day is those frantic waves um, from the coaches and, and everyone standing over there, the players. They're just, uh, they're just saying, you need to get over here. There were no paramedics on site, but thankfully, two watching parents happened to be nurses. We waited 28 minutes until the ambulance actually got there, and then it took another 12 minutes to get back to where we actually were. Been just about that long to get torn to a local hospital where he was placed in a medically induced coma, then airlifted to Valley Children's Hospital in Fresno. And then that's when the devastation came. That's when the doctor took us into his office and said, look, uh, Torrin has suffered a traumatic brain injury. A diffuse axonal injury, which they usually only see in car accident victims. It's where your entire brain is shaken up. So Torrin was injured in five areas of his brain, including the brain stem. And they told us he had less than 10% chance that he'd ever regain consciousness. And if he did, he'd most likely be in a vegetative state. And I'll never forget, Trey and I were sitting there, and Dave and the, the doctor looked at us and he said, he will never play a sport again. And at that point, Trayden started bawling because he knew how much sports meant to Torin, how much it meant to us. And to think that this kid who two weeks before was the MVP at the state lacrosse championship game was never gonna play a sport again. They said to like do anything to try to wake him up and stuff like that. And so I started talking to him and stuff like that. And he wasn't answering me, and I just didn't know what to do. You just, uh, you're never prepared for something like that. And we just kept thinking, we, you know, we would say to the doctors, no, you don't understand. My child is a perfectionist, and I guarantee that recovery is going to be no different. Because we just knew he would fight. And he there you did. go. After five days in a coma, a breakthrough. And Dave texted me and said, they're getting him up. He opened his eyes and they're gonna stand him up. And I thought, what are you talking about? When he got up for that first time, you know, we're going back to like when they were, you know, one year old, two years old. You know, we have to teach him how to walk and how to talk and, and how to do all those things again. And it was crazy. He'd walk, do everything, like catch balls and stuff like that. Everything with his eyes closed. And I, I didn't understand it at all then. But then it all started coming like we need to work with him and work with him and work with him until he can get back to normal. My parents, they told me I would come back even better. Initially told he'd have to spend six months hospitalized, Torin left after just 17 days. His arrival home? unforgettable. All the way up into our driveway line with his teammates and his classmates and people we didn't even know from around the community. And just making me feel as normal as I could be back then. Torrin was back in the gym, running track and preparing to support his varsity teammates from the sideline. He said, I didn't want to let my coaches down. It just describes the kid. He's just always worried about everybody else. The first thing that popped into my head was the word game changer. And I looked at this as no different than an, than, a, than an actual game. I looked at it as, okay, he's up against the fight of his life. Whose hands do we want to put the ball into? And I'd pick my son every time. And, um, and that's where game changer came about. And he slept about 20 hours a day, but when it was time for rehab, he'd get up. He always pushed himself. It's not just mom and dad coaching him and cheering him on, he's self-driven. He wanted to get better, and so he did. What I respect about his recovery is that it's been about how he can help others through similar type things. It has become a way that he can give back, and he has made something very, very positive of this.
In the first year after Torin's injury, the Moronic family started T3 Charities to support brain injury research and provide financial aid to families facing tragedy. They traveled to Boston, where one of the country's top concussion doctors called Torin's injury one of the worst he's ever seen in a young survivor. The day before that appointment, Torin signed up for and won a men's 5K race near Fenway Park. Torin's local medical team cleared him to play most sports, including lacrosse, but not football. Doctors say he's no more likely to get injured than anyone else, but warn that if he does, it could be catastrophic. Torin returned to high school, spreading his senior year classes over two years because his brain needed extra rest during the day. He got his driver's license back. He earned more admiration from brother Trey, who still reminds Torin that he's only the third funniest in the family. Mom and dad found faith, and Torin convinced his parents to let him get a tattoo. Perseverance. It's what makes a game changer.